Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage View Lab. Today we've got the video review of our Seagate Ironwolf Pro 18 terabyte hard drives. Now these 18 terabyte hard drives are a big improvement over the last version by two terabytes more and a smidge faster. They're a moderate improvement over the last Ironwolf Pro hard drives with two terabytes of capacity and a smidge lit more. Uh, performance and uh, we took these eight well there's four on the table but we have eight total put them in a QNAP NAS to see what it could do uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at some of the highlights before we get to the performance um, it's important to understand how Seagate sets these up in their portfolio they've got the standard Iron Wolf design for smaller NASs um, this one the Iron Wolf did not get updated in this latest round so it caps out at 12 terabyte yeah, and I think for the average consumer, going over uh, 12 terabytes, you're going to get into the realm where the cost is going to be pretty high, and there might be not as much of a benefit going to fewer drives versus just increased uh, drive count for higher performance. So we've got, that's one big difference, and we obviously go up to 18 terabytes uh, capacity in Iron Wolf Pro, and the uh, standard Iron Wolf a little bit. Uh, less endurance. I can't believe we're talking endurance and hard drives at the same time, but that is Has the world we live in. Has anyone ever worn out a hard drive? Oof, I, I wore out some VHS tapes back in the day. Yeah, but things have gotten a little bit. I'm thinking back to, we have some early uh, 5K RPM drives. I think you had it in a NAS that, what, uh, came out at nine years or so of runtime? Years and years yeah. and years. A uh, little bit difference in the warranty. And then, of course, if you step up to the Seagate Star Screams at the far right side, uh, they actually have an 18 capacity now. It's not in the picture, but it's in the spec sheet. Um, and is you know, more of your enterprise grade use case. So the Iron Wolf Pro goes in the um, larger form factor, uh, Synology, QNAP, Asus Store, whatever. Yeah, I think up to 24 bays. And then the other guy goes up to unlimited in case you want to. <laughs> to well, really... you know, they have those. Um, who was it recently that just announced? Uh, it was Dell, that uh, XC7100 that fits like 100 drives in it, that's yeah. where you want the uh, the star screams to go. Because in 5U, you can have just a sick amount of capacity, 18 terabytes. That would hold a lot of uh, online fireplace videos. Fireplace videos. Yes, fireplace okay. videos. Um, so as we take a look at uh, the specs, go ahead and drop in to, to what we're looking at here. So this we sliced off the top half of the spec sheet, and it's you know SATA drive, CMR, which is, you know, kind of getting to the end of what we're going to see with CMR capacities. Um, the uh, endurance, which is they call workload rate, of course, sensors and sensors. They've got a lot of sensors on these NAS drives for vibration and that sort of thing. I think it's important. It helps uh, drive in that reliability aspect where at least you understand that the vendor's taking approaches to try and mitigate some of those issues. Yeah, and uh, again, the five-year warranty. They've got the data recovery services. Some of these softer things will make a difference, I think, as people consider what drive to buy, especially in this category of product that's going to be uh, maybe in a small business or you know in your home that's holding you know your personal files. If yeah. they're going to, they went from two to three years, I think, on the uh, on the data recovery service. So if you are considering this versus your other options. There aren't that many other options these days, but things like the data recovery services make a difference. Um, so we talked a little bit about performance. Let's uh, start there. Now these numbers are are from Seagate. They've got uh, the 18 and the 16 terabyte drives lined up. In our charts, as we'll get to, uh, we didn't actually chart out the 16 terabyte. We've got a testing. Uh, nuance there, right? Those were on a different platform. Now we've migrated to this QNAP platform. Yeah, there's enough of a difference there where you really want to compare like-to-like -to -like NAS platforms with hard drives. Right. So anyway, we can see from Seagate's data that there is, is that what qualifies as a smidge, that uh, read bar? It's probably a solid, like what, 10, 15 megabytes a second uh, increase. Yeah, but wait till you see the 4K numbers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure those are identical. <laughs> Find me the smidge in there. Okay. And then when you take a look at our numbers, what, what do you got going on here? So we're testing these things in a RAID 6 group across eight drives. And uh, it, overall, I mean, you're looking at effectively being able to saturate uh, two 10 gig ports. So in our uh, scenario, we're doing, um, uh, we uh, create four shares and uh, we allocate two shares per a uh, uh, IP range. 
and we're looking at SMB performance for a file share and then iSCSI for a block. And we're on the uh, read for SMB, we're able to uh, effectively saturate those two connections. Uh, write speed is um, uh, more uh, limited by uh, rate overhead, but at 1.3 gigabytes a second. And then iSCSI is around 1.9 uh, gigs for uh, both read and write. And this, this is interesting because you talk about being able to saturate uh, the interface we're just using eight drives here. That system that we're testing with is 12 plus four, right? 12 plus four plus two or something in terms of the capacity. There are a ton of MSATA slots inside of it, yeah. More than, yeah, so you, if you put 12 drives in here and a flash volume and a cache or a tier mechanism, I mean, you could do, you're, you're gonna push it to the Yeah, edge. I think uh, this particular model and others do support uh, going um, to increased uh, NIC speeds uh, depending on uh, what the, uh, support devices are. So uh, certain high-end devices will allow you to uh, push beyond that. In this case, uh, if you wanted to um, really drive in performance uh, increases on the NAS platform, you're probably not looking at sequential bandwidth, you're looking at I uh, like IO. Okay. So on that, uh, on that front, uh, because these are hard drives, you're not gonna find a lot of uh, really fast uh, random uh, IO performance. In this case, we came in around 2,000 IOPS for uh, iSCSI uh, saturated and uh, maybe 2,800 IOPS for uh, SMB. And overall, I mean, it's it's gonna be usable, but you're not gonna put a uh, any substantial VM on this or multiple VMs, but that's where flash comes that's in. That's what play. the SSDs are for. Yeah. Nonetheless, I mean, you look at 4K performance and a lot of this comes in from uh, cache improvements you're gonna find at the uh, uh, the NAS level and not really much what you're going to find on the hard drives themselves. But this gives an idea, when looking at a NAS drive, it's not really the performance of that specific drive, it's how it's going to react and perform into uh, in the NAS you're installing it with. But in that case, we saw between um, 9.5 and 8.3 uh, thousand IAPS for SMB and iSCSI. And then on the uh, right throughput, uh, it was around um, 900 to maybe a thousand and a half so it's it really depends on where your focus is but again if you're if you're looking at random access you're looking at probably wanting to get some ssd cache in it well i mean these are going to be mostly sequential reads and writes and then in a uh, nas like that well one other thing to think about too and you know it probably doesn't come up much but do you worry about or is there a concern about or what is the concern about capacity in a nas because now that we're at we have eight of these 18 terabyte, what's that total? That's like more than 80 terabytes of storage. My brain cannot work that calculator at the moment. 80 and 64, that's like 100, it's a bunch. But you're gonna run into issue on a lot of the NAS platforms. But, well, that's they... what I'm saying. Like if, in our 12 bay, can we actively use all of those if we were to fill well, it up? Our 12 bay has 64 gigs of RAM, but okay. uh, QNAP does have a limitation where I believe it's, uh, if you have four gigabytes of RAM or less, it's 144 uh, terabytes maximum volume size between multiple volumes, nice because he shares. Or I think it's 300 terabytes for anything above four, uh, four gigabytes of RAM. Okay. So there's, it's an area where a lot of people don't really think about the uh, storage allocation sizing in terms of RAM. But now that we are, uh, we do have hard drives keying this high as they are. Sure. That's something to take into consideration. Yeah, so our system's loaded, but maybe on like an 8-bay where there's a low, a smaller RAM footprint. Like a value 8-bay or, or whatever. But if you're going to go with these massive drives, just don't cheap out on the RAM or at least check the manufacturer's RAM requirements. Or make sure uh, it's upgradable in case you do. Or that, yeah. Yeah, yeah certainly. Um, so that's one concern. The other big change, well, it's not really a big change, it's just a progressive change, is that rebuilds with these things are taking forever. Yeah, and there's not really a uh, silver bullet that takes care of it. Everything well, it's because, math, right? Yeah, you're looking at transfer speed, and uh, unless you have this thing sit perfectly idle and just go at the maximum throughput of the drive, you're still looking at like hours or days mm -hmm. while your RAID might be unprotected. And if you're running RAID five across these, I mean, you're you're you are insane. Well, what is what is the preferred? Uh RAID these well, days. Well, into the things. range where RAID 6 makes sense. You really want, uh, like, my personal NAS, I have RAID 6 and two hot spares. So, <laughs> I can't. Okay, so you're a little higher on the data protection. Yeah, but you. Neuroses. I think 
RAID 6 is where everyone's uh, wanting to recommend for uh, these larger disk drive sizes, or RAID 1 if you have uh, just two, okay. uh, or if you're on the uh, flash side, RAID 5 is still pretty safe considering how reliable the drives are. Okay. Well, let's take a quick peek at the system we tested with anyway and see what's going on here. Yeah, so we have our other four uh, 18 terabyte Iron Wolf Pros in here, and then we also have some of the um, Iron Wolf uh, 125. That is for so another on. review, sir. Yes, but we're not showing off the performance in this review, so it's all good. <laughs> okay. But it gives you an idea of where you can start to mix and match. And by the way, this particular platform has six M.2 bays. So, uh, yeah, I remembered it had them. I just didn't remember how many. And they're they're all over the place in there, aren't they? Yeah, there's anywhere you could look. There's probably another uh, hidden SSD yeah. bay somewhere. One behind the LCD panel in there. Yeah, but overall, I mean, it gives you an idea of where. If you're starting to leverage, uh, leverage these drives, you're really looking at capacity on hard drives, uh, more I.O. intensive uh, activities on uh, flash, and you might be using SATA, you might be using M.2. I mean, it really depends on what your uh, use case is. Speaking of rebuilds, though, is there a, I mean, ideally you would have the NAS idle so that it could use its resources. Is there a way through QTS to prioritize or deprioritize yeah, the build? Yeah, so when we kick off our reviews, for example, uh, there is a setting where um, right now we have it set to uh, resync first, but on QNAP you can have it uh, adjusted where uh, servers first, low speed. Uh, so that's where um, right. you availability want your is. Yeah, you want your uh, workloads running at their preference. Mm -hmm. uh, default, which is kind of middle ground, and then resync first, which is high speed. And this will get closer to um, the throughput ranges of the drive itself. But I mean. You're still looking at uh, many, uh, almost I say tens of hours, but your pr your rebuild time, if you had one of these drives fail and you were also using it for other activities, you'd probably be trying to rebuild it for a few days, if, if, if not more. Okay. Well, I mean, I know when we get these in for review, it's kind of like slam the drives in, turn it on, and Come back let and it bake for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why sometimes these reviews get a little slowed up, because then they start baking and... And then you forget about them. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was rebuilding, but at least when you remember, it's done. Right. It's, all, it's ready for you when you come back. So overall, 18 terabyte, I mean, big drive CMR uh, technology that we mostly all know and love. And they're a, officially a smidge faster and uh, maybe a little bit more than a smidge bigger, right? Yeah. So if you need the major capacity, it's another great option with a five-year warranty and three years of data recovery. So... Overall, good drive for what it is and the, the uh, niche it fills. Thanks for tuning into this review. We'll be back soon with another one.